hello. I have another book review, but before I talk about the book, I have a little friend who wants to say hello. This is Lily, AKA Christmas, AKA Mommy Cat. Yes, she's called Mommy Cat because she has a son named Pumpkin. Yes, so cute. Say hi, Lily. Hi. And my book just fell. Anyway, so the book that I have today um, that I wanted to do a quick little um, recommendation review on is the classic The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham and illustrated by Robert Ingpen. This edition is super awesome in that it's hardcover and has um, a ribbon bookmark. I have to be honest, so far my children and I are reading it and we absolutely adore it, but we are only on chapter 10. This is where we are. This far into the book. So we're almost done. Um, there are 12 chapters, so um, haven't quite finished it, but um, almost finished and it's just awesome, amazing, fantastic. We've been reading it um, probably for I'd say about five weeks. Um, it's a pretty long book. It has about 220 pages. So uh, to read to young children, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time just inching along. Anyway, that aside, a uh, fantastic book, wonderful illustrations. They're all of this nature, very detailed. Here's another one. Okay, so the basic premise of the story is, um, it's about these four animals, a toad named Mr. Toad, a badger, just called Badger, and the water rat and the mole. Um, those are the primary characters and they're all just kind of animals that have been personified. Um, they're living in rural England in the Edwardian age. Um, the book was actually composed of stories from my understanding that the author Kenneth Graham used to tell his four-year-old son Alistair before bed. So he'd make up these stories and then he, he decided to put them into this, into this um, book. Um, the story. Uh, basically, the premise of the story is, see, this one's a tough one to explain, just a little side note, because it's so richly detailed and the language is so rich. Um, it's such a multifaceted book, but yet simple at the same time. So it's taking me a little bit of time to really think about how best to relate it to you. Um, the best way I can say is yes, it's about four primary characters who are personified and just their adventures going through uh, a few years of time. Um, there's Mr. Toad and he's a very wealthy toad. He is fascinated with driving cars. Um, and then there's the water rat and the mole and they are very, very good friends. And then there's the badger who lives in the woods by himself and he likes to keep his distance. Um, but they're all, they're all friends. And so uh, the toad and the river rat and the mole, they go off on an adventure and then the toad decides to steal a caravan, a car, and he gets thrown in jail and then he escapes from jail. And um, his friends try to help him out. That's where we are at chapter 10. Um, it's really picking up the storyline right there. But anyway, the language is just so incredibly rich. Um, here's a brief, little snippet. It's a super popular line from the book. Believe me, my young friend, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, half so much worth doing as simply messing about in boats. And that sentence is rather concise and to the point compared to all of the other sentences in this book. Um, the sentence is, if you can imagine a book filled with the most amount of run-on sentences that you can, this is the book. It's speaking in very rich um, late Victorian or early Edwardian language and uh, very rich in that regard. And then just the length of the sentences, you 
I, I read everything out loud to my children, so I'm reading and I've said, um, let's say, 30 words and the sentence is still going and going and going and you would think given a run-on sentence like that that gosh the listener or the reader would get bored and think geez end the sentence but this book manages to just make run-on sentences absolutely fantastic and amazing and engaging and just you feel like you are absolutely transported to another world when you read the book especially out loud if you have the opportunity to read it out loud to your children or um, anyone in your life whom you think might enjoy it, that is the richest way to enjoy it. It's not really one that you would want to read silently. I don't think you really, you really, really gain from just reading it out loud with your voice. Um, yes, so I don't know that I can say much else about it. Let me give you one more peek at the illustrations. Um, here is the toad jumping off of a train. He has stolen a washerwoman's clothing, clothes. Um, he's dressed in a washerwoman's gown, trying to go incognito as he escapes from a maximum <laughs> security prison. So um, just amazing, amazing story. Um, I'm hoping I can find something else I can read to you that could do well at describing the the language used in the book. This has been a wonderful day, said he as the rat shoved off and took to the skulls again. Do you know I've never been in a boat before in all, all my life? What? cried the rat open mouth. Never been in a... You never will I... What have you been doing then? It's just like this dreamy, ethereal language. Um, is it so nice as all that? asked the mole shyly, though he was quite prepared to believe it as he le leant back in his seat and surveyed the cushions, the oars, the ro row locks, and all the fascinating fittings and felt the boat sway lightly under him. Just very descriptive um, and engaging language. So if you're looking for a book for summer, um, a good one to start now is The Wind in the Willows. It spans the summer season and then even goes into the fall and the winter. So um, definitely relatable with summer though. Sorry if my description isn't maybe the best. It's just such a magical book and so multifaceted. You really have to pick it up and dive into it to just really understand where I'm coming from. But yeah, A plus 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 plus. Read it to your kids, though. Thank you for it. Have a good one.